Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial channel. It's Danny here and today I'm going to talk about simple linear regression, part 1, correlation coefficient. In this part 1, I'm going to first show you how to construct the scatter plots and then how to compute and interpret the correlation coefficient. So first, how to construct the scatter plots. Let's consider example 1. A real estate agent wants to study the relationship between the size of a house and its selling price. The table below presents the size in square feet and the selling price in thousands of dollars. For a sample of houses in suburban Denver neighborhood, here we have a sample of eight houses and their corresponding selling prices. So our question is, is it reasonable to suspect that the selling price is related to the size of the house? And in order to do so, the first method is get a plot. This is called the visual um, method. So the way we construct a scatter plot is first we make the um, x axis and the y axis. This is a coordinate system. The x axis represents the size of the houses, and the y axis represents the price, the selling price. And on this coordinate systems, we mark the order pairs. For example, the first order pair is 25, 21, 400. So on the x axis, we look for 25, 21, and on the y axis, we look for 400, and matching them, we got this point. You see that? And so on. Similarly, we got eight points on this coordinate systems. So that's how we construct a scatter plot. And um, this is the scatter plot of the model of selling price of these eight houses and we see that uh, the larger size the larger size here tend to be associated with the larger prices for example you see here uh, compare d2 point we see that when the size of the house is larger the selling price is higher that's why we see here larger size tend to be associated with larger prices. And the smaller size tend to be associated with the smaller prices. And here we call this is a positive association. By the way, the opposite with positive association is negative association. That means the larger size tend to be associated with the, the smaller prices. And the smaller size tend to be associated with the larger prices if we have negative association. And on this example, we see that the points, these A points, tend to cluster around a trait line, an imaginary trait line. We can imagine there is a trait line here, right? And these A points cluster around the trait line from the lower left to the upper right. And linear means straight. So we have this is a linear association. So combine these two commons. We have the selling price and the size of the houses have a positive linear association. And of course depending on the data set we have many kinds of scatter plots. Here we have um, various types of association. I have here five pictures of five different cases and let's consider one by one. If you look at picture A, you see here the, uh, the dots, the points, tend to cluster around a trade line and we see that the trade line goes up. So this is a positive linear uh, association. You see that because the larger value of x 
is associated with the larger value of y, and the smaller value of x is associated with the smaller value of y. So this is a positive linear association. Now for the picture B, these data points also cluster around a trait lines, tend to cluster around a trait line. However, this trait line tends to fall down, right? The slope is negative. So we said this is a negative linear association. On picture C, we see these points kind of like go uh, everywhere. Is uh, these do not cluster around a specific trait line? It's kind of, it's kind of like wide uh, from four sides. So we have this is a weak linear association. That means x and y don't have a clear linear relationship. Now we consider picture D. For picture D, we see that the larger value of x tend to uh, uh, tend to be associated with the larger value of y, and the smaller value of x tend to be associated with the smaller value of y. However, this is not really a trait line. You see, like the ten the tendency here kind of like a curve that is. Um, uh, concave down curve, right? This is a concave down curve. So this is a positive relation, but it's not linear. So we say this is positive nonlinear association. I repeat, it's positive because the larger value of x tend to be associated with the larger value of y, and the smaller value of x tend to uh, be associated with the smaller value of y. But this is not linear because the data points tend to make a curve that is concave downward. And for picture C, uh, we see that this is a negative relation because the larger value of x tend to be associated with the uh, smaller value of y. And the smaller value of x tend to be associated with the larger value of y. So this is a negative relationship, but this is not linear because we see that the data point tend to um, make a curve that is concave upward, not a trait line. So we have this is a negative nonlinear association. So two variables have a positive association if large values of one variable are associated with large values of the other. Two variables have a negative association with uh, if large values of one variable are associated with small values of the other. Two variables have a linear relationship if the data tend to cluster around a trait line when plotted on a scatter plot. Um, so when we uh, investigate the relation between two variables, we first use uh, the scatter plot because the scatter plot visualize well uh, the tendency of the relationship between x and y. However, sometimes scatter plot is not enough because scatter plot might depend on the scale of the uh, x and the y axis. So sometimes scatter plot is not enough to uh, visualize the relationship between x and y. That's why we need a numerical way. And the numerical method here is to use a um, uh, quantity called correlation coefficient. So first definition of correlation coefficient. Let's say we have a couple order pairs x, y. That means we have two symbols with equal symbol size, symbol of x and symbol of y. And uh, we matching them to have a couple order pairs. The symbol means of the first symbol is x bar. The symbol mean of the second symbol is y bar. The symbol simulation of the first symbol is sx. And the symbol simulation of the second symbol is sy. 
and these two symbols should have the same symbol size, n. So the correlation coefficient r here is computed by the following formula. r is equal to 1 over n minus 1, summation of x minus x bar over sx, times what y minus y bar over sy. So when we compute uh, the correlation coefficient by hand, first we have to compute the first factor in the sum, um, sum, uh, summation. We have to find x minus x bar over s of x, and then we have to compute the second factor in the summation, y minus y bar over s y. The next step, we have to multiply the answer of the first and the second step together, and we have a new list of number, and then we add the new list together, all the number in the new list together to finish the summation. And then take that answer to divide by n minus 1 to get the correlation coefficient. That's how we compute the correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient have a couple of properties. The first property is the correlation coefficient is always between negative 1 and 1. That means r is less than or equal to 1 and is greater or equal to negative 1. The value of the correlation coefficient does not depend in, uh, does not depend on the units of the variables. It does not matter which variable is x and which is y. The correlation coefficient measures only the trend of the linear relationship between variables and can be misleading when the relationship is nonlinear. The correlation coefficient is sensitive to outliers and can be misleading when outliers are present. So these are a couple of properties of correlation coefficient. Now we learn how to interpret the correlation coefficient. So we have two cases here. When two variables have a linear relationship and when they don't. When the two variables have a linear relationship, the correlation coefficient can be interpreted as follows. First, if R is positive, the two variables have a positive linear association. Two, if R is negative, then the opposite outcomes. The two variables have a negative linear association. If R is close to zero, we have very weak linear association. And if R is close to 1, we have a strong positive uh, linear association. The closer R is to 1, the more strongly positive the linear association is. And if R is close to negative 1, we have a strong negative linear association. The closer R is to negative 1, the more strongly negative the li linear association is. If R is exactly 1, then the points lie exactly on the trade line with positive slope. In other words, the variables have a perfect positive linear association. However, in the real life, we never have a positive, uh, a perfect linear association. If R is equal to negative 1, then the points lie exactly on the trade line with negative slope. In other words, the variables have a perfect negative linear association. However, the last two cases are rare. Like we don't see perfect relationship in the in practice much. Uh, when two variables are not linear related, the correlation coefficient does not provide a reliable description of the relationship between the variables. So that's how we interpret the correlation coefficient. Now, let's. Uh, Go over one example. Example two, use the data in the table below to compute the correlation coefficient between the size and selling price. So here we go back to example one, but this time we do not construct a uh, scatter plot, but we compute the correlation coefficient. So here from this data set, before we uh, compute correlation coefficient, we have to find a couple of statistics here. X bar here, 
Here I'm going to use x for the symbol of uh, size and y is um, the symbol of selling price. And we see here x bar is 2891.25. Uh, we can simulate tech A numbers. Uh, 25, 21, 25, 55, 27, 35, and so on to 3198. Add these A number in the side list together and divide it by 8. We got symbol size for uh, size. And similar, we got Y bar is 447. Simply take the A numbers in selling price list, add them together, and divide it by 8. And we can find symbol simulation of the size symbol and symbol generation of the selling price symbol. The symbol side here is 8 because we have 8 uh, houses um, collectors. And don't forget the formulas of the correlation coefficient. So here R here is equal to 1 over n minus 1 summation x minus x bar over sx times y minus y bar over sy. In order to compute correlation coefficient, first we have to compute the first factor, x minus x bar over sx, and then we have to compute the second factors. The, the result of the first step should be a list of A numbers. The result of the second step is also a list of A numbers. Then the next step, we have to multiply them together, lie by lie. So it's like we take the first number of the first list with the second number of the second list and multiply them together and we have a new list of A numbers and then we add them up and divide it by 7. That's how we compute a correlation coefficient. Alright, so here we got, this is the summar, uh, summary and this is the formula. So now we make a, ball, uh, we make a table. The first column is X. That is the uh, the size of the houses. The second column is Y. That means the price of the uh, the selling price of the houses. And then the first step we have to compute the first factor that is X minus X bar over S of X. So here this is how I do it. For the first number, I take 25, 21, which is X. Subtract X bar, which is 28, 91.25 and divided by S of X to 69.49357 and it got the third numbers on the uh, third list negative 1.3738732 and continue I take 2555 subtract 2891.25 and then divided by 269.49357 I got negative 1.2477106 and so on I finished the, the list of um, A numbers on the first factors and similar I, I continue on Y subtract Y bars over SY the first number I take 400 subtract 447 and then divided by SY, which is 29.68405, and so on. I finished this list. You see that. So now I have finished the first two steps. So step three, I look at uh, column three and column four, and here I'm going to take this number time with. Um, the corresponding number. Here I take negative 1.3738732 times negative 1.5833419 and we got 2.1753110. That is the first numbers. And so on. I take negative 1.2477106 times negative 0.7074506. I got 0.88. 26, 9, 36, and so on. I have a new list of A numbers. So this is how I finished the uh, step number three. Now I have a list of A numbers in uh, in uh, dot color here. The next step, here I, I have finished the product of the two factors. Now I have to finish the summation side. In order to finish the summation side, I add these A numbers together these A number in the in the bold color. You see that? And I got a 6.304.1423 is the sum of the last column. 
and then I divide it by 7. 7 here is a subtract 1. a is the same with psi. a subtract 1 is 7. So the correlation of coefficient here is 0.9005918, which is close to 1. First, this correlation coefficient is positive. So we have a positive um, association. And because 0.9 is close to 1, so we have a strong linear relation. So combine the two conclusions together, we have this is a uh, strong positive linear uh, association, a positive strong linear association. So that was it. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.